Hello everybody, it's Mike here at Gabe from Scratch, and today we're going to be checking out the S2 engine. In fact, we'll be revisiting it. Why revisiting? Well, I've already actually done a pretty in-depth tutorial on this guy, or a closer look. Closer Look series is all about kind of combining a getting started guide and a review all into one. So it gives you a good idea if a game engine is right for you and what the workflow is like in that engine. So since I've done this, instead of going to a whole lot of depth about, you know, the nuts and bolts of the S2 engine, I'll just link this down below. So if you want to learn more, great place to start. So what exactly is the S2 engine and why am I revisiting it? Well, the S2 engine, as far as I can tell, it's a sole developer commercial engine. It's a lot along the lines of the Lumix or Lyman engines I featured recently, although further along, better graphics and commercial. Now, when I say commercial, it's also quite cheap. We're looking at it being $22 Canadian. So in US dollars, that's, I don't know, $2, maybe $3. Canadian dollar ain't doing great lately. That's probably about 16 bucks US. Uh, and another one to keep in mind, this guy goes on sale quite consistently, so you can get it for about half that price on a regular basis. But there was a pretty major update going on. Now, one thing to do be aware of, this one right here is very important. You don't need to reboot your PC, by the way, but if you do run into a problem when you first try to load the editor, it'll give you an error along the lines of uh, some S2 physics engine.dll not found. Uh, just go into the redistributable folder, click the the um, physics installer, the most recent one, it'll say, do you want to uninstall? Say yes. It says, you want to reinstall? When you click it again, say yes, and then you're off the race. So it's not hard to get it up and going, but this thing just breaks badly if it doesn't run with the right version of the S2 engine. So, uh, uh, sorry, the um, the physics, phys, phys X physics engine. But the big thing that we're interested in today is uh, this announcement right here. So there was a major um, release that just came out on September 26th, a huge update, and we'll come back and look at the exact details in a minute. But first, let's go look at some eye candy. So what exactly do you get for a $20 game engine? Um, you get a pretty pretty engine, to be honest. Here is the S2 engine running in the editor. You got a nice water system. You got a nice skybox environmental effects going on. The water is actually really nice. Um, you got this weird depth of field blur effect that is dialed up to 11, but it can be disabled. And then what you'll see here is you've also got, and I believe this is one of the new features, you got a full day-night light cycle. And as you can see, it it's pretty. <laughs> it, uh, it does a good uh, difference over time. You got full configuration of how things are going to go over here. Environmental effects, fogs, clouds, smoke, um, water, blue, that kind of thing. And then let's run off into our world a bit. Let me just bring that back a bit so that we ain't raining. There we go. Back nice sunshiny day. And this is your game world. Now your programming is done. Uh, you can do it via Lua scripts. So any container, any one of these guys. Let me just find one. Right, Most of these are spawn points, I think. Um... They can have a Lua script attached to them. I'm not going to get into the specifics of the Lua scripting. There's also a finite state machine option. So if I can go ahead and find... There is a track... Uh, there we go. This guy right around here somewhere is the player character. That's not the player character. Where's player spawn point? Ah, there we are. So here we are, player. Right there. So you see over here... Um, the things that go ahead and make something up. It's not a full component-based system, but you'll see it is built up of different categories, model, render, the animations attached to it, the physics attached, the behavior attached, miscellaneous. Over here, we can switch over to objects. This is basically your scene view world. So I'm gonna go ahead and select my character that way. Uh, we can toggle visibility easily enough. When it's selected over here, you've got the various different things that it responds to. You'll notice here there's a set of events uh, that you can send to this character to cause it to do things see if it actually works. So let's do a, a jump event. So let's send, boo. So there he's responding to said jump event. At the same time, there is a finite state machine uh, controller. Let me see if I can figure out and find it where that guy went again. Yep, yeah, that's hidden away over here in the events category. So you see here is the finite state controller controlling this particular character. Let me just bring this guy over here. So in addition to your Lua script, you can also kind of do these wired together controllers and the various different things that they do. So here are your forward events coming in. Um, you kind of switch between the various different states. And we saw again how you can send those messages to the particular game object. Uh, I, you can also, of course, control everything here with the Lua programming language. And that's kind of about the extent of it. Let's go on back over to our editor. So once again, you saw everything was very customizable. I could break this guy over and dock it to the side. Any one of these tabs can be dragged and dropped to another location. And in our editor, let's go find some empty field. 
I'm controlling uh, new view navigation using the WAZ keys. You'll see over here we have train sculpting. So right, that's a really big brush. Let's make that guy much smaller. So we can, you know, sculpt train. Pretty typical from game engines, but it does a good job. Good feedback, good tool, good solid tooling. And you got your various different options here. You can also even get in here and go ahead and create a road. So I can come down here and say plus, create an empty road right here. Let's, uh, okay, no, we need to add points first. Oh yeah, I need to add a material. Uh, material, where did the material go? Just a sec. Uh, da, 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 da. Material, click here. And then I go to roads right here. And let's do, yeah, we're gonna go medieval on this road. All right, so we've got our road ready. We got a road created in the list. We're in road creation mode. Select an empty slot. I did. All right, did I need to do something more? Thought that was all I needed to do. I might be missing a step here. Hold on, so there's my step. Please load a material. I did. There's my material. All right. All right, to hell with it. Basically, you can actually uh, just paint spline paths on the, the ground that become road surfaces. Uh, I'm missing a step here, and I, I don't want to go through it again. The, the interface for creating roads isn't the most intuitive thing you've ever seen in your life. But you kind of get an idea of what you're dealing with the game engine over here in general. And uh, we also have AI here. You can set various patrol points around the world for creatures to go in. You also got, if I scroll down here far enough, the respawn points as well for spawning off zombies. And yeah, yeah, that's kind of about it. We got material editors. We've got, um, uh, what else we got here that's of interest? As mentioned, you've got your scripting, so we can open up your scripts this way. Uh, not the most exciting scripting interface you've ever seen. Uh, what else we got? Uh, we got vegetation editors, cutscene editor, class view, yeah, pretty straightforward. Oh yeah, we've also got a GUI editor. I'm not going to bother getting into it as well, but if you want to create your... Uh, I'm still in that mode. Uh, switch out of that mode. Uh, but yeah, pretty straightforward, pretty clean interface. And again, for a single developer effort or a small team effort, this is a very beautiful game engine. I, I definitely have to give them credit there. They've, they've, they've done a good job in many regards. If you want to go ahead and test your game, uh, you can just go ahead and do game start and it will create it down in this window now I believe you're ultimately just creating desktop only games here Unfortunately, I think the tool is also windows only so that's gonna definitely uh, Lower it down to a, a certain subset of the community Here We are running around. We're gonna see some zombies pop in eventually. There's a couple there's a zombie and <laughs> Headshot. Oh, that was a headshot. Come on. Okay. That was definitely a headshot do this brute force style. But anyways, that's the idea of what you're getting. Uh, that is the S2 engine, and I'll shut it down so my uh, CPU fan can stop screaming at me. And let's head on over and look at what actually came in this HD 2018.1 release. Pretty good sized update. Um, redesigned the editor GUI, much more usable, load to save game system, new proprietary texture format for better texture management and rendering speed up. Uh, new atmospheric scattering system, 3D clouds. And we saw this a little bit when I switched through the dynamic environments. They do look quite a bit better. An improved ocean renderer. I got to agree with that. The ocean does look really solid. An improved PBR shading system. Uh, PBR being physically based uh, rendering, which is the roughness slash metalness metallic texture workflow. Exporting buildings model feature in building generator. Texture atlas customization in building generator. Following some of the minor changes, and I won't bother getting into them, but as you see, there were a couple of minor updates as well. So it's nice to see this game engine, which I, I think I purchased like two or three years ago, that I'm still getting pretty major and substantive, uh, substantive updates to it. So I figured, you know what? It's definitely worth a revisit. Now, why would you choose the S2 engine over various other engines? That's where it gets a little tricky because you've got... Um, I don't think any of the C++-based open source engines that I featured recently, such as Lyman, Lumix, uh, Banshee, I don't think they're this far along yet, so you could definitely go down the road for that way. This is more of a competitor, I bet you, for uh, Leadworks, as an example, which is very similar to C++ source code-based, Lua-based scripting environment. Um, but why choose this over the Godot game engine, the Unreal engine, or the Unity game engine? That's a little bit trickier, but it, it may just appeal to you. You may like the look. You may like the idea of supporting an underdog. 
I, I don't know. It's it's a harder sell. We're getting into the world where we have these really high quality game engines available for either free or AAA quality. It's it's harder to justify these independent efforts. But um, they don't need to have hundreds of thousands of developers using them to be viable. They need you know hundreds, possibly thousands, and that's about it. So if you liked what you saw here, do be sure to check out my closer look at. Um, you know things have changed, things have gotten better looking, but the fundamentals are still the same. So if you're looking at how to create a game using the S2 engine, uh, this guide will definitely help you. And as I mentioned earlier, there is a text-based version of it. Uh, yeah, so that was 2016 where I did the look at, and I'd owned this thing for a while. So I'm two plus years on, and I'm still getting some pretty serious updates to it. So that's cool to see. It's definitely nice to see their developers supporting their product after the fact. All right, that is it. I uh, hope you, some of you guys found that interesting. That is the S2 engine. If you've never checked it out before, maybe do give it a, a quick look, especially this uh, closer look is a good place to start. And um, if you have checked it out, well, give it a look again. It just got a lot prettier. Okay, talk to you all later. Goodbye for now.